continuous time Butterworth filters serve as a useful example of how continuous time filters are specified and designed. So the Butterworth filter in particular is given by a magnitude response squared that takes a particularly simple form. It's 1 divided by 1 plus the quantity omega divided by omega c raised to the 2 nth power. And n is said to be the order of the filter. And you can see that this filter is going to have a gain of 1 at dc, or when omega is equal to 0. And then when omega is equal to omega c, this ratio will be 1. And the filter will have a magnitude squared response of 1 half. So at omega equals omega c, all of these Butterworth filters go through the value 1 half, and that's said to be the half power frequency because half of the power into the filter will show up at the output of the filter. Then, of course, as omega gets very big, we see that this filter begins to behave as 1 over omega to the 2n, so it's going to roll off. And, of course, as n increases, this filter has a sharper cutoff or a sharper transition from the region where the pass band would be located, in other words, where it's unit gain, down to where the stop band is located, where it approaches zero gain. So I've illustrated two different cases here, say n equals 1, which is a fairly slow transition, and then n equals 4, which would be a much faster transition. So it's clear from looking at the magnitude response squared that this filter has a monotone decreasing frequency response. The magnitude response decreases as omega, the frequency, increases. Now, furthermore, if we look at the magnitude squared of the frequency response for this Butterworth filter, we see that it takes a closed form expression for a geometric series when omega over omega c is less than 1. And we can expand this out for values of omega over omega c less than 1 as the infinite geometric series 1 minus omega over omega c to the 2n plus omega over omega c to the 2n squared or to the 4n minus omega over omega c to the 6n and so on. We can clearly see now that the first 2n minus 1 derivatives of the magnitude squared at omega equals 0 are exactly 0 because when I differentiate this 1 is going to go away and the rest of these terms up to 2n minus 1 derivatives are going to still depend on omega so if I evaluate this at omega equals 0 I get exactly 0 and for this reason the Butterworth filter is said to be maximally flat that is the frequency response starts out very flat because all the first 2n minus 1 derivatives are exactly 0 and then it gradually begins to roll off. Now in the s-plane we can describe this filter using a transfer function by finding the poles and zeros and to do that we're going to use the fact that the magnitude response squared is just the filter frequency response times its conjugate and since these filters are assumed to have real valued coefficients, the conjugate is just the negative frequency, omega. And therefore, using the relationship that s is equal to j omega, what this says is that the frequency response is equal to the transfer function evaluated on the j omega axis. So we can show that hb of s times hb of minus s takes the form 1 over 1 plus s over j omega c raised to the 2n power. And from this expression we can deduce where the poles of this filter are located. In particular we see that the poles of hb of s times hb of minus s have to satisfy sk divided by j omega c raised to the 2n power is equal to minus 1 because that's how we get the denominator to be equal to zero. And you can do the algebra to conclude that sk is omega c times e to the j pi over 2n times 2k plus n minus 1 for k equals 0, 1 through 2n minus 1. Of course, there's 2n roots of minus 1, and that's how we get all of these poles.
if you sketch those in the S plane, where remember we've got sigma on the real axis and j omega on the imaginary axis, it turns out that there's two end poles associated with this function, and they're spaced by 360 degrees divided by 2n, and the radius of those poles is at omega c. So, for example, if n were equal to 3, we would have the poles indicated by the magenta x's here, and they would be separated by 60 degrees, and they'd be on a radius of omega c. Now these are the poles of hb of s times hb of minus s. So we need to decide how to choose which poles belong to hb of s. If we want a system that's stable and causal, then we're going to have to use the poles in the left half of the s plane and associate those with hb of s. So these poles here are associated with hb of s, and then these other ones, of course, would be associated with hb of minus s in the case when n is equal to 3. So we get a pole at negative omega c on the real axis. We have poles in complex conjugate pairs at omega c equals e to the j 2 pi over 3 and e to the j minus 2 pi over 3. That's these two poles here. Putting all this together, we can find hb of s, the transfer function in the s domain. And if we multiply things out, we get that it has omega c cubed divided by s plus omega c times s squared plus omega c s plus omega c squared. That's the transfer function for a third order Butterworth filter. And we derive that from knowing what the characteristics of the magnitude squared of the frequency response has to be and using the fact that we want this system to be stable and causal. Now there's two free parameters in this continuous time Butterworth filter and those are omega c the half power frequency, and n, the filter order. So let's suppose that we have a low pass filter specification that's indicated by this tolerance diagram here, where the pass band goes up to 0.2 pi, and then the stop band starts at 0.3 pi, and these units are radians per second. We'll define the pass band such that the gain of the filter is between 1 and 0 0.89 and then in the stop band we'll require the gain to be less than 0 0.175. Since the response is monotone decreasing we know that we can use the band edges as the frequencies that we want to satisfy the constraints at. So we require that at the pass band edge in other words when omega is pi over 5 or 0.2 pi the magnitude response squared which takes the form 1 over 1 plus pi divided by 5 omega c raised to the 2n, that that has to be greater than or equal to 0 0.89 squared. Similarly, at the stop band edge, when omega is 0.3 pi, we require that the magnitude response squared, which is 1 over 1 plus 3 pi divided by 10 omega c quantity to the 2n, that has to be less than 0.175 squared. Now you can do some algebra on this and you end up finding that n equals 6 will work for this particular set of constraints. And furthermore, if I force equality at the pass band using n equals 6, I get that omega c would be 0 0.7024. Of course, we could also force equality at the stop band, and that would give a slightly different value for omega c in this particular case. So using our formula for the pole locations, we see they're at a circle of radius 0 0.7024. They are going to be spaced by 30 degrees, and there will be six of them in the left half plane because n is equal to 6. So it turns out that they're located at angles of plus or minus 7 pi over 12 radians this pole here and this one here. Also at plus or minus 3 pi over 4 radians, this pole here and this one. And then at plus or minus 11 pi over 12. We can multiply this out to get a filter transfer function, hb of s, that's going to have omega c to the sixth power in the numerator. And then in the denominator, we have three quadratic terms that are associated with each of the pairs of poles that occur in complex conjugates. And if you check out the frequency response of this system, 
that we've designed here. It turns out, indeed, it does satisfy the specifications. I'm showing on the axis here units of frequency divided by pi. So this mark here at 0.2 corresponds to 0.2 pi radians per second. And indeed, the filter response ends up above 0 0.89. And similarly, at 0.3 pi radians per second, the filter response is below 0 0.175. So the overall strategy here for finding a Butterworth filter in continuous time is to use the fact that we know where the pole locations occur because of the frequency response magnitude squared defined for Butterworth filters. And once we know that, then we can obtain the transfer function for the continuous time filter.